he was called him happy old last time he heard that endearing nickname was Thursday night. Lee, he and the partner with whom he shared 45 years of broadcasting experience, partner and friend, Joe DiNardo. Joe, at his bedside, leaned over and said, Hey, Pap. Paul Long opened his eyes and answered, Well, oh there, you old. His characteristic greeting for DiNardo, and he stopped. Paul's son, Chris, tells us Joe was the last person Paul talked to before he died. Good evening. Paul Long dead at the age of 86 from congestive heart failure, but his legend lives on in the countless stories now shared by his friend and colleagues. He won fathers of Pittsburgh Tech in the engine and pulled channel for the city. But I in Pittsburgh started long before that. In the meantime, parents of the special ed... This case, so inextricably linked with Pittsburgh television for decades, made first parents in the tiny Texas town of Como. He didn't arrive here until 1956, brought by a KDK radio job that the woman who would be his wife. Paul met Elaine Hinder at KDK, where he with the Kinders three, and became one a year later. Paul eventually moved to television, dabbling in drama as well as news. We have a holy purpose, Joseph! This is a 1958 television production, and Paul played the founder of a religious community in New Economy. It always wanted to be an actor, and made a very brief appearance on Broadway in 97. We folded after the second night. <laughs> <laughs> but news, not drama, was his destiny, as was not their 45 relationship again at KDK. All the news, order. In 1969, the dynamics of Pittsburgh Jonah Television Dave News. Murray, then, General Manager John G. Conomikes brought together the team they channel for a major player. John Conomikes sat me down and talked about a, a new news department. We're so going to bid it almost for scratch. And I would be a part of he asked me what, uh, what ideas he had, and uh, I'd like to see your weatherman, the uh, Joe Nardo. I think he could be had now, a word to the effect. But uh, he said, we've been talking to him. He's playing hard to get. Maybe you can bring him in. And I gave him some some to tie a rope around Donardo and drag him in here he first. Conomikes, who became president and CEO of First Isle Television, remembers Paul as man who made WTAE News. He and know made the operation. He was an absolute pleasure to work with. He was a star and a first class gentleman. He was my mentor. Of the very if I ever had a thought, if I ever wondered what I should do. He was the person I talked to. He was the ultimate journalist. Everything had to be exact. There were no gray areas with him. He interviewed presidents. He interviewed governors, mayors, billionaires. He all did. This is a normal person on the street. Just kind of messed up. That's better. Yeah. Right. So what is part of the end? But in the newsroom, Paul was legendary. The butt of Nardo's practical jokes. Paul always left the keys in his car, so Joe hid it night and promptly forgot it. And I see him walking up down the parking lot. And I said, oh my God. So I went, I said, Paul, <laughs> what are you doing? I'm looking for my car. I said, well, you always leave the keys in the car. Somebody probably stole it. Oh, they did. He goes back down. I said, probably in the lower lot. He goes down to the little lot, and I immediately run up to the beer. She's bringing it, put it, until coming. I said, oh, this. He looks and says, I must have missed it. <laughs> he got in the car, started it, and took off. He was a man of simple pleasures, flying, gardening, and driving home to have dinner every night with Elaine. She talked it in this 19 deep and in. The nicest part of my day is when he comes over here. When he comes home here, we're just moon and fall. But I'll remember him most to be someone that I talked to. Someone I could confide in. Someone would always give the right advice at the right time. True friend. Someone I tell my deeper secrets to. No. They would stay with him. That's Paul Long's attitude about the current two strike in that ship. So lots of pictures there. Past Paul Long and Don Cannon. Two newsmen with authority and, and credibility. But also two men with very different eyes in just about every way. Yeah, especially in the suits. Don, a dapper dress. Paul, Paul didn't regard clothes in One joke counted, and, and it would let us all know they were doing it. He wore the same suit for 12 days. And getting ready to go to Colorado, he brought, and I remember this happening. I think he had cornered in the big wire when Don and, and Joe went asked him what he was going to wear to go to Colorado. He said, the one he had on. And either Don or Joe said, well, you've been wearing that suit for 12 days, Paul. And Paul said, they don't know that motto. <laughs> I can't do a Paul Long occasion. Well, 
from Ron Paul. Here is his co-anchor so many years, Duncan. He looks at us a lot, and he would fall asleep sometimes at his desk with a large cigar hanging from his lips. And more than once, his shirt would catch on fire. You would see holes burn in his shirt, so we would rush by and kind of had a shirt to put the flames out, and he would snap out of his slumber and say, in my shirt, you know, and there's a big hole there. So that happened a lot. Um, and one day, he set the newsroom on fire because this before computers we wire copy, and wire copy would pile up barrels, and uh, he would walk in the wire room, which was by glass, and flick his cigar ashes in a big barrel of paper. And once in a while, the ashes would set the barrel of air on fire, Williamsburg Fire Department came rushing. So, uh, those were moments. <laughs> he really loved this city. He came here in 1946, passing through on the way to New York to resume an acting career or a radio career. And he had talked to general manager Katie K. Radio, and the gentleman said, Paul, if you're in town, stop by. That was in 1946. Stop by, and he stayed forever. Yeah. When I had this uh, director from Monday in my ear, that, uh, one of those times that Paul set the uh, wire room on fire, Don, also a big crack broker, in just held the door shut in the wire room while the car began to blaze. Oh, it was a lot of fun. All the stories tonight. This next woman you're about to hear from adored Paul and loved doing stories about him. Storyteller in Cullen. Remember Paul. No anchors look like. He sounded like an anchor. He didn't look like an anchor. And I, of course, adored him immediately. He was funny. He was kind, he was sweet, he was uh, not one of these egocentric uh, television types. He drove a battered old car, he never wore a coat in the winter, he wore the same baby stained tie every day, and he came to work religiously every day. He was one. We were better with him. And we're missed because he's gone. I, I, uh, I love that old man. Yeah, she loved him so much, she actually went flying with him well, enough to do that. And like he did with a lot of people who went flying with him, he just gave her the control. And he had the tape that you could hear the photographer scream, scream, Paul, oh, come back to that, because he wasn't lying. Oh, the first piece he did. Well, now my colleague Eleanor Shane remembers her 40-year friendship with Paul, a journalist who could not only lure her but also go out and get I had the mad rush. I mean, gotta believe Paul Long was the sexiest man in the world to a young journalist. First of all, he was bald, he had a scar on his left cheek, and he had this big, booming voice, and he intimidated everyone. Well, I could know Paul very well because we worked together for so many years, and in fact, our desks were next to each other in Channel 4 in the room. And that letter turned into just enormous respect. Paul Long was the newsman's newsman. He, um, he not only knew how to get a story, but he didn't know how to tell a story. I mean, we were friends for 40 years. He's a marshal. He's just the warmest, most, most, yeah, most generous and such a friendly man. He, Elaine, and the kids, I mean, they just, you know, they were, they were such a wonderful, wonderful family. Um, I, I will never, ever, ever forget the wonderful experience of one side by side all along because with, with him leading us, it leaves whole in, in an industry. His, his image has been indelibly etched on so many people in so many different ways. And we will leave him a prominent broadcast here in Lish in just a moment. But first, let's hear from one of the closest, Paul, our own Jeanette. We lost a man who was a dedicated journalist, a man of unbelievable knowledge, great broadcaster, and personally, my very good friend, Paul Long. I've been Texas, he was a part of the Pittsburgh radio and television scene for more than 50 years, and a close associate of mine for almost 45 years. We both came to the Channel 4 new team over 30 years ago. Paul was a man of integrity who diligently discreet. He had a knowledge of American history and was a sailor for grammar, selling, the use of the English language. The voice belonged to only one man. On a trip to Canada, he was in London, and one of him said, You are Paul Long. He said, He recognized me so far from Spur. He answered, It is your very unique voice. He replied, My good woman, there is no such thing as a very unique. Things are just unique. She said, well, your voice is uniquer than most. He was unique, and there will never be another Paul Long. I'll miss him. Welcome to pour into WTAET reading Channel 4 News. The most continuously asked question still is, what do Paul Long, Don Cannon, Bruno, and Ed Conway say to each other following the newscast? We once again join the closing credits in progress to seek the answer.
So did you get that cut in your wife? No, what she said. Pretty good message. Uh, she wanted to pick up Anna Hairspray for her. Tonight we're a local broadcast legend, Paul Long. We'll continue our look back at his life in just a moment, but first, a look at the other news happened today. We also have Mike and Paul Long continues now. In late years, Paul brought a pension for Michigan. Boy, did he have that. And his fondness for people of western Pennsylvania to the Palmer Series of Well, one of those visits, Paul discovered McDonald's the first time in his life. He was in his 70s. His friend Dave Pran drove up to the drive through window, and Paul pronounced, I will have hamburgers and a beer. <laughs> Even Zay knows his host remembers other visits. I don't think the best part of his career, you know, when he had to give up the um, anchor seat and he was still part of the staying going out, but he did it with such uh, charm and, and such grace. It was like taking the savior of the town. You know, everybody would just come out to see him. And, and the ladies made such a fuss over him constantly, like, say, back off, you know, I mean, here you go, me, you know. We're going to continue remembering Pong in just a moment, but first check in with meteorologist Stephen Croft. And Pittsburgh newsman Adam Lynch shared his thoughts on the death of broadcasting legend Paul Long. Adam Lynch told us that he learned a lot of things from Paul Long. In fact, even when Paul was generous, which was often, you felt as though you were learning a lesson at the same time. I remember once I needed a stamp, and I said, Paul, do you have any stamps? He always had to drive with that. Yes. I said, could I have one? Yes. So I went over and he gave me the stamp. And I went, hey, and he said, young man, I'm not in the business of selling stamps. I am not the post office. I am your friend. Do you want a stamp for me? I'll be glad to give it to you. I don't want to go and sit down. <laughs> Words of that fact. <laughs> That's the way he was. He was a lot. Years ago, you didn't know them, but it was a party line program on your radio, Ed and DK Party Line. We, and there was a gang that kind of ran together and all in that gang. We were in that gang. There was a Christmas tree here in his house. And Ed would write these remarkable songs. He would get a popular song and write his own satiric lyrics. And one of the songs all were done with Paul and Ellie. Ellie sang usually soprano and he sang bass. Um, I remember that seeing them together and that for the live. They're beautiful together and he was such a sweet, sweet and humble man. I'm going to delay. We'll look back like Paul I'll continue in just a moment and you will love sports next. It's wild. Horrible. You find a couple guys who never work well together, who complement each other in every way. Like Paul Long and Don Kent. That sort of communication you just don't find every day. So it's no accident that more people are switching to action news. Good evening. Paul Long and Don Kent. Pittsburgh's choice. Naturally. Oh. Ah, the piece of history as we seem to remember Paul Long, who died to age 80. More on that in just a moment, but let's check in with sports director Andrew Stein. Andrew, Paul loved the Pittsburgh Pirates. Not only did he love the Pirates, he did games with radio operations during the 1960s. Paul, a dying old pirate, and certainly had a pirate. What was another? He came in 1980. I was absolutely terrified of him because he looked so stern in that voice. I mean, it was like the voice of God, and it was just so intimidating. And I remember at one point, I don't, we read the stuff, I don't think he'd have a guy with him, but you got to know that he had such a part, and, and it was so soft hearted. And we started talking about the Constitution, and he started asking me if I was a strict constructionist. I realized how incredibly bright he was, how well read he was. And he did, through his lifetime, through his work career, see so many honors, so many accolades. He was inducted into the Pennsylvania Broadcast Hall of Fame. But one of the things he was proudest of Mike was piloting abilities and his knowledge of airplanes. And he loved the knowledge. The only thing he probably loved more was why Lane. And why did he love her? And she loved equally. But she not only with him. The story is they were on vacation in New Mexico in Albuquerque. And uh, there was an oil leak. had to land in Texas. And he said to the mechanic, I'm going to Albuquerque. And the mechanic said, we can't fix this, you know, today. And he said, I, excuse me, I'm going to Albuquerque. And, and Lane was on a plane. She said, no. no. And Paul said, madam, you have five minutes to get in the plane. Well, she didn't. He summarily plugged off the plane, put it on the tarmac, and flew out her. Chase later, Lane ride by train to Albuquerque. And um, was Paul. I mean, he was not to deter. He was very deliberate about everything. Especially with right. language. I remember one one of the news, the 11 o'clock, was our producer. Paul loved to write obituaries. He loved, and um, someone had died. He, was getting, he came to the producer and said, how much time do you want? And he said, the, the producer waved him off. And you dismiss Paul. The producer waved him off said, just give two minutes, Paul. He wait two minutes. Wait a while. Paul walked back to this, sat down at that manual typewriter, pecked away, and... Two, two minutes years. worth of copy for a 20 minute story. That was Paul Long. Uh, I don't know what's we have to show. Tid Leonardo was telling a story about he was doing weather over the winter, and sudden Paul Long appeared wearing a blonde wig, and Bill Crack could not finish the, the, the weather guest. The next day he was called into the president's office there, Franklin Snyder, and he was really worried about it. But she got the blonde wig. 
shoved it on, his head, got all in the door, I broke out in the room and said, get in my room, get in. and didn't represent. He was a multifaceted human being who loved by so many, loved so many, and he loved We always say about someone like this, he be sorely missed. Yeah. This man, words cannot express Our what a gap is. Thank you, Paul, for everything.